You wanna learn to fly? Well, what about a full immersion? I mean, throw you into the deep end, see if you can sink, swim, well, or fly, on this episode of In The Hangar. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Milliken. Welcome to In The Hangar. We've got a special episode, special at least for me, because we're gonna be talking about what I called flight camp. And this is where I took some friends of mine and we went and did a nine day full immersion training. Uh, before we do that, I wanna mention our, our sponsors. We're brought to you by them. We can't do this without them. Check them out in the description below and we'll have a little bit more at the end. So let me introduce to you our flight campers, our happy campers. So we have Journey, Ron, and Brad. Guys, thanks for, for coming on. This is really uncomfortable for them because these guys are all part of my crew. Um, I've been working with Ron and Brad for almost 20 years, and they're my camera guys, and 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 Journey is, has recently come onto the team. And, and so you guys work behind the cameras. How yeah. fun is this? Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying, yeah. No, it's, it's not that bad. It's fun. It's, it's definitely fun. fun. <laughs> I don't know. I've been practicing for this moment for 20 years, watching everybody else, so yeah. I'm gonna see if I can put it all together. Yeah. Okay. All right, so so what I did is, uh, you know, you guys knew me before, long before I was ever a pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, a long, you've known me more as not a pilot than since I've become a pilot. Mm -hmm. And you saw me go through the training. Experiences you saw some of your weak points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, you were there when I bought the 210, yeah. and Aww. I started flying you guys to yeah. different shoots. Um, and we're still some of the guys that will still fly with you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're the ones that are left yes. that will yeah. actually fly There's with you. some me. that won't. Um, yeah, uh, Ron, I flew you over the Rocky Mountains. You got a little sick. We won't go into that. Yeah. Uh, Brad, you we went, I remember Pennsylvania flying the crew up there for an oil field shoot yeah. that we did. So lots of flying. And then I got my instructor, my CFI. And um, when I was learning to be a CFI, I actually gave some kind of lessons, as it were, uh, they didn't count um, to some of you guys, but uh, then um, I got my my uh, instructor, and I remember giving you first lesson. Mm -hmm. The 210 is not the plane Probably not. Training. <laughs> no, 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 it's a little, little complex. And I kind of told you, so all we could do was really work on some things like uh, how to, how to, what trim is about, and mm -hmm straight and level and how to do turns and, and some of the more principal stuff, but we couldn't like beat up the pattern or anything like that. So I always wanted to train you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, so we decided, gosh, probably nine months ago that we needed a week to do this and that we would book in the week with intensive days of training. And you guys had to turn down work mm -hmm. to be able to do that. And Journey, you came along um, and uh, you received a scholarship. Tell us about that. Yes, I was a first recipient for Tailwind Waymakers, and oh my gosh. Okay, so back up, backing up a little bit, um, I went to Dan's hangar because someone was there to film, and I asked if I could just sit in the back seat. We show up to his hangar, and he's like, Journey, you want to fly my plane? And I was like, me? What are you talking about? Oh, okay. So I flew it. Of course, it became a discovery flight. And Dan did like 95% of the work. I did all the fun parts. And then we were getting gas and he was like, Journey, would you ever do this? And I was like, I think so. He gave me a lot of confidence and I was like, yeah, let's do it. And a couple days later, I started applying for scholarships and Dan called me, he was like, hey, you should apply to this one. And I was like, okay, for sure. A couple days later, he's like, Journey, uh, check your email. So I did and turns out I got it, crazy. So he told me about the flight camp as well. I decided, why not? Let's join that. So um, he sent me the ground school information two days prior yeah. to starting the class. And I was like, okay, awesome. First lesson, night and day different from the discovery flight. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, Dan it was just like, all right, get in, go. I'm like, how? Okay, I did not teach that <laughs> way. I, okay. I'm just gonna Whoa. say I did not. All right, so, go. <laughs> honestly, kind of, because I've seen other first lessons, like people go in the simulator, they have like all this intensive like ground school before, they're like, all right, you're gonna do this and this and this. Not Dan, Dan was just like, all right, God, hurry up. <laughs> but honestly, it was, it was so memorable, it was super exciting, and um, I couldn't be more grateful for Dan and Tailwind Makers to have made that opportunity possible. Well, what we did is uh, to be able to do this, um, mm -hmm. 
nine days of intensive flying while I'm still running my business and everything else, I knew I couldn't do it yeah. uh, by myself. So what I did is, um, first of all, we had a guest instructor one day. Christy was able to come out and give you a lesson, and yeah. that was a lot of fun. But um, I knew that we wanted to work out of this particular airport, and so I just asked around for like a really good quality um, flight school that could kind of really uh, support what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And we found Fort Worth Flight School um, out of Fort Worth Sphinx Airport. And those guys there were truly amazing. They, mm -hmm. they yeah. gave us a big room that we could, you know, base out of and do all our, our lessons and, and everything else, our pre-flighting. And, and in addition to that, we were able to get some of their instructors. I think you went through pretty much all of their Just instructors, about, got a so taste yeah. of everything really there. Really close, yeah. And, um, and that was really, really beneficial, having a flight, a flight school really kind of back us up. Mm -hmm. but what do you think, I know you really don't have experience on like what it would take if you were to do, you know, one or two or three flights a week, kind of slow pace it. I mean, what were your thoughts on this full immersion, drinking from a fire hose? Honestly, since this is my star, I don't know anything else now. I remember the last day you told me, all right, Journey, that was your last flight. I was so sad. The <laughs> next day, not waking up and going to an airport was so out of routine. I was like, dang, I really miss this. I understand why everyone has a bug now. For me, I, this was the only way I was going to do it. Oh, so, yeah. For, uh, I mean, I'm in, you know, our, our, our industry, we're so busy and mm -hmm. we're traveling a lot. Right. And... This, I had to just shut down. You're right, you know, I turned down work and just shut down for the nine days and really focused on it. And for me, that was the only way I was gonna do it. And again, like at, at, at the, same, the same thing, I was, after I did it, I was like, oh, I'm not flying today, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was, I've really gotten used to it. And, and now it's like what they call it, uh, chair flying. I'm in the car driving, <laughs> I have my hand up like this and I'm, I'm you know, on the oak and I'm, I'm just constantly going through it all, all the time and wishing, I, you know, I could still do it. So uh, mm -hmm. it was really great having that opportunity to, to do the school and just really every day focus on it. Otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I agree with Ron, you know, making a commitment. A lot of times we say we can't do something and it's just that we won't do something. And when you make up your mind that you're going to learn something new and being able to dedicate a week and say, I'm just, I've, I've got this nine days, I'm gonna really focus on it and be able to achieve something at the end of the week. I mean, you can apply that to anything you wanna learn. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to flying, yeah, you just have to make up your mind that you're gonna do it and get it done. I think it's the best way now, in hindsight, looking at it. Well, there's, you know, I, as we talked about a little bit, there's two real kind of paths you can go to, to train to get your private. And in the FAA world, they call it the Part 61 or the, the Part 141. Mm -hmm. And what that means is under the 61 rules, it's pretty much your own pace. And you can go in whatever order. I mean, you can learn the advanced stuff first, then the, you know, the um, basics later. I mean, it, there's no real rule about that. When you go to a Part 141, that's your full immersion school kind of thing, and where it's very rigid. You go lesson one first. You cannot go to lesson two until lesson one. And, you know, but it, it, you get to uh, you have lower re thresholds on some of the like time building requirements and things like that because you get checked along the way and everything else. So we are in a part 61 environment, but doing the full immersion. And when I decided, you know, that just, I knew you, and I knew that we would have to do, you know, a full immersion week to get you jump started. Um, I, so I, I looked around to see, you know, what is out there that if somebody wanted to go from zero to hero and get their private, you know, what I, I found one place that did a two week zero to hero uh, but most of the ones I found out there were three weeks. And you had to come having your physical, your written past, you know, and all sorts of things <clears> that you had to, <throat> to do to, get, to do that. So that's kind of the premise we, we got there. But my biggest concern, and so I'm going to put you guys on the spot, my sure. biggest concern is that we do this jump start and you don't go further. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, are you going to go further? What's your plan? I want to go all the way to CFI now, oh, nice. which was crazy. Because remember the first day in the air, I don't think I've ever said, I'm scared, Dan, like, help me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that in my entire life. But by the last day, I was like, I'm so addicted. Like, I want this to be the rest of my life. Well, and, and for you, I know that when we get into something foreign, 
Yeah. You know, we've never been in that situation. Sure. All of a sudden, the p plane even just hits turbulence. That can freak somebody out because they've never experienced that before. Mm -hmm. And so I remember the first time I encountered turbulence as a student, my instructor said, yeah, we just went over this parking lot where this heat has come. Oh, and it, and it just set me at ease. Yeah. So, yeah, the unknown becomes the known. And, and I could tell by the end, you were good. Thanks. You know, that stuff wasn't, wasn't phasing you anymore at all. Yeah. Ron, I'm scared for you that you, because I know how busy you <laughs> yeah. are. Um, no, I, I really want to continue it. I don't know if I can, you know, do two or three times a week, but my goal is to do at least fly once a week and, and continue, um, continue on. I mean, this, uh, I was telling my wife after probably the first couple of days, I hadn't felt, uh, it was weird, I, exhilarated or alive and, and, and my, I, my brain stimulated in like 20 years from when I started film school. Yeah. And so it was just real exciting to just kind of put, exercise my brain again. I have really had to, you know, the film industry for me has just become kind autopilot. of- Autopilot? Autopilot, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're just like, okay, another job. Okay, great. Let's, what, the, what are the challenges of this one? Great, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. it can be fun and creative, but this was the first, you know, being a pilot, I mean, you really, you have to use your brain a lot, a lot more than filmmaking. Uh, so uh, it's, it's been exciting. It's been thrilling for me. So uh, I definitely want to keep it going. I definitely want to continue this, um, this journey. So that, that's no Well, question. and at once a week, um, I think you can make some strides forward. Anything less than that, I think you'll end up, um, the lessons will just rehash the last lesson. You'll yeah. be, get, get stuck in a cycle where you're not really advancing in your training because mm -hmm. you're having to remember what you did last time. Right. So I, I do think it's important that, that once a week is probably minimum. That's minimum, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, but, but do it, please do it. Because, you know, you have, have the skills. I mean, you could, I could tell your confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, after the first little bit, I mean, you're very, very good with your high hand eye coordination. Mm -hmm. And um, your fine motor skills, all your gross motor skills, everything is there. How did you feel in doing that? Um, I, I think I told you, like a few days before leading up to the camp, I was like super nervous. I was like, I, I don't know if I can continue it or do it. I, I was just, for some reason, there was just some block in my, in my head. And then as soon as the first flight, I was like, it kind of came all back to me. And I was just like, no, I, this is this is exciting. Um, and I and I was telling them, you know, mm -hmm. fly, the physical part of flying plane, I think would come natural to me. Uh, I, um, yeah. But it's it's the all the other stuff you have to learn. Radios, radios, <laughs> communications. Yeah. yeah. And actually, by the end of the week, I felt a lot more confident uh, about radio communication than I did at the beginning of the week, for sure. Uh, so that was a big hurdle for me. Is if I could, you know, get past that, then I would I would uh, not be scared anymore and continue. So uh, I, I've. I'm super excited where my progress. I hate that I didn't get to solo at the end of it. Um, I knew I could. Um, you, yeah, and, and you would have yeah, had you had the medical. Yeah, I, yeah, getting, getting my medical in time. So yeah, but yeah, that was great. Uh, Brad, I mean, again, I, I've known you guys for for two decades. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know you guys very very well, um, and. Um, I, I was worried, about, and I'm not as worried about you continuing your training because um, you are so Precise. methodical. Yeah, that too. OCD. That's a term. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That um, you know, you're the one who's going to come in with with every I dotted and every T crossed, and um, and you did. You had your medical and everything. And um, what's your what's your plans to keep it going? Yeah, you know, at this pot or at this uh, juncture, I'm kind of pot committed. I think with that intense week, I right. got so far. Um, once I start a project, I, I pretty much need to see yeah, it exactly. through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and that's the I, OCD part. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> you, you leave one thing hanging, you're gonna have to fix Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But I really enjoy flying. Um, flying's been in my family for a little bit. My dad was a pilot um, for uh, an airline, and uh, so it's there. It's been you've you've watered that seed and it's growing and and yeah I need to finish through um, getting it all done uh, I'm, for 2023 I'm trying to be a lot more intentional about my time and how I apply my time and so I'm going to be making time to continue the training and, and get my license. Now you live a little further away from that particular airport. You live much closer to another airport that has flight training as well. What are your plans? Are you going to go to that airport? Or are you going to come back to to Fort Worth Flight School? Well, you know. Fort Worth Flight School treated us so well, and I got to go through a lot of different instructors, just who was available that day. And it was it was a really unique experience to be able to go through and uh, sample them. I would know enough now to go to the flight school down there and probably do a little kind of pre-interview to see if I gel well with them. But um, the folks at Fort Worth Flight School are so great. I mean, it might be worth the drive just to keep going back yeah. and training with them. Um, 
I'm they in a were, similar yeah. boat. Yeah. yeah, we've considered the same thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're really far. You're like an yeah, I really far. like hour and a half or but so. Just yeah, that good. yeah. And that was you know? great. That was great. It was great getting a different instructor almost every day, and and yeah, because every one of them taught differently, but every one of them was great. And so right. I, you, mm-hmm. you just everyone has a, had a different uh, you know technique or a different style, and that was great. So I mean, I mean, I don't think there was. It was like, oh, I think maybe this is the one I want to stick with. But it was really, it's like, they were all great. So yeah. it's, it would be hard to kind of choose, right. you know, who do you stick with. But it's just like, they're all good. And I think I would encourage anybody that's, that's thinking about going through flight school to sample a few instructors, to yeah. work with them, to see what your learning style is and what their teaching style is, and to, to find the right mesh. Because uh, I think that's going to pro- progress your um, progress a lot faster. Absolutely. Yeah. Hardest part of flight camp? We'll start, we've been going this way, we'll go with you, Brad. Um, probably the hardest part, a lot of people say, is like radio work. Um, but I'll tell you what it is, it's not specifically radio work, it's because you, with flying, you're experiencing so many new things that have to be done simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, multitasking, I don't know if that's a misnomer, if you can truly multitask, but what I think it more is, is a division of your time, how to balance and budget your time between all the new things that you're learning. and. Each individual task really isn't hard to learn. It's balancing them all at the same time and getting comfortable with them, and that comes with repetition. Um, so that's kind of my viewpoint on that. Yeah, I would say the same thing. The communication was probably, and the ground school for me. You know, just committing, uh, ground, it, it was more about time management for me. I'm the worst at time management. So it's like get, getting enough ground school to, to know what I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be doing ahead of time was, was hard for me. but. Uh, once, once I was there, I just couldn't wait to get in the plane and, and really practice. So, yeah. I think mindset and then introducing something so foreign into your daily routine. I mean, I feel like I'm an adrenaline junkie, but even that first lesson, I was like, wow, this is so new. Like, I really need to get used to this and quick because I need to go back on the ground and survive this. So, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, guys, it was quite a week. It was, um, um, it was emotional. What it, about you? What was the hardest thing for you to oh, teach okay. us? <laughs> Come on, who's Dan. Give, who's giving this interview? <laughs> um, okay, uh, there were a couple of pretty hard things. Um, making the time was probably the number one hard thing for me because running a business, we've got a lot of things going on in the business and managing that at the same time. Yeah. And then we're and, filming the whole thing, so we're oh, putting yeah, cameras on right. all the planes. Oh, for yeah, every the lesson. GoPro's overheating, and, you know, maybe so, that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So doing all that stuff um, and then teaching, you know, you guys, um, I was really thankful that I could sp- get spelled by the mm-hmm. Fort Worth Flight School guys um, right. because um, uh, I could not have done the week teaching, you know, two or three flights a day. Mm-hmm. And really, we were looking at even, there were times, to see, times we did five flights in a day that, yeah. that some of you got two in a day. Right. We never did six. So we never did a day where, each Everyone of you flew two, twice, right. but we did do some where two of you flew twice. Yeah. So um, I could not have done that, n- yeah. not even close. Um, I was really, I was really uh, exhausted after two flights. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I never did more than two flights mm-hmm. with you guys because I was just like, I can't do it. <laughs> um, I'm amazed at, at the guys at Fort Worth Flight School that, I mean, they just hop in and do it, yeah. you know, I don't know how many it's like times. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy, so. All right. What would you say to anybody who's thinking about learning to fly? Um, is this a good way to do it? Um, you know, what do you think? I think so. I mean, I, at least for me, my, whoever, you know, personality-wise, who, if you're someone who kind of puts off things and mm-hmm. is worse at time management, this, for me, this was great. Again, like I said, I probably wouldn't have done it any other way, but it really ignited something, jump-started for me, and I was able to commit to it. Uh, and we, by the end of the week, I almost had 20 hours. Uh, yeah. of, of, of flying just in that in that well eight days or nine days yeah I was so, at 16 yeah so that was that was really that was really great um to to really jump start so i say but definitely if if you're on the fence about it just do it you know really commit to it and have fun with it all right one th- one thing that i discovered as well doing the ground school ahead of time mm-hmm. is i was going through each section and really trying to master each section before i moved on and what i discovered about halfway through it's it was better to kind of at a quicker pace, go through everything so you got 
an overview of everything you're going to be experiencing and learning and then go back to the beginning and really start drilling down in there. So when you get in the airplane, you kind of have the big picture of what you're trying to accomplish. We all know we're, we're flying, but the individual components, you understand how one feeds into the other and what the responsibility of everyone is and how it all meshes to, to make the airspace work. And you can apply it. Yeah. yeah. It, which reminds me, um, you know, I recommended you guys uh, do ground school, uh, Gold Seal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how, how was that? It was, it was really good. They, I was able to really pull it up just about any location and, and study with it. Um, sometimes I would just listen to the audio in the background. Other times I'd be more engaged in it. Uh, but it was easy. They had lots of animations and video and a good balance of, of learning materials. It was, yeah. yeah, it was good for me. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm better at one-on-one. And I was able to, it was able to give, give me good information and get through it. And so I had an overview, like you said. Right. Uh, but a couple times when we were there and did, uh, some of the instructors would do a ground school. It, they were able to kind of, it was click for me much better. Yeah. So uh, online isn't as good for me, but it de definitely gave, uh, I, I love the way Gold Seal is, is, was set up. Um, but having that one-on-one -on -one with an instructor is, just helps it solidify the information better for me. I'm a huge systems person. So I really appreciated how straightforward it was. I don't like when things just go around the bush and they're like, it may be like this. Like, no, like it's going to be like this. Prepare this way mm. and show up. And if you're still confused, then you can know what to ask your CFI going mm. forward. Well, all right, guys, the big next thing is um, that wonderful day when you pass your check ride for your private pilot. So, um, you know, that's, I really want that to happen in 2023 for all three of you. Thank you. So, and I think it will happen. Um, you guys all have what it takes, and uh, I'm excited to see what the future brings. Thanks. Oh, thank all right, you. thanks guys for, for coming on. Okay, and what's really cool is we did videotape this, and I've got so much footage, I think it's gonna take <laughs> probably two years to edit it. But <laughs> sometime soon, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to re release the series of Flight Camp of what these guys went through and and you can follow along in their journey so so pay you know come back to the channel and see what we've got there i want to thank our sponsors we have some really really good sponsors and and every single one of them is started and run by a pilot and we love our pilot community and want to support our pilot community so supporting them helps support us and keeps it all with the aviation group so thank you guys very much please like share and subscribe we'll see you next time in the hangar